Okay. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. 6 verse 17. Let's stand for the reading of the word as it is our tradition here. From henceforth, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's repeat it one more time. Thank you. Sit down on your enemy's head balandociously. They will not recover. And our anchor scripture is taken from the book of Galatians chapter 1, I mean chapter 16 verse 17. And we trust God that your life shall never remain the same. Galatians chapter 6 verse 17. I want to share on a simple topic that I titled the mark of God. Tell anybody the mark of God. Shout it well. Shout it like thunder. Say the mark of God. Say it again. Say the mark of God. We have all manner of marks. We have Yoruba marks. We have Igbo marks. We have pet mark. We have tribal marks. And just as we have tribal marks, we have what we call the mark of God. A mark is a sign that is established or registered on somebody to introduce the personality of the person and from which direction the person is coming from. So in other words, a mark is a sign of identity. A mark is a sign of identification. Sometimes when you see a man from a part of the north with a speck, a, a particular mark, you can say this man is a northern man. For those who are the Igala, the Idoma, there is a way they give their marks. Now for those who are from the Yoruba side, there is a way they give their mark, especially those who are from Ibadan. Their marks are so much pronounced that it registers in three dimensions. Am I talking? Now, when you see them in those days, one of the reasons why they give the mark it's different from what you have today that you call the tattoo. Mm. It is to differentiate and to help to recognize that this person is from this clan, from this village, or from this town, or from this place. And God speaking here through brother Paul in the Bible. Paul began to speak in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 17. Can you put that? In Galatians chapter 6 verse 17 say, From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of God. Did you see the mark? There are so many marks. Not just one mark. The marks of God. I bear in my, in, in my body the marks of God. I want to believe that. You put marks on the body, not in the body. So this kind of mark dwells inside because it's a DNA mark that mixed up with the blood and the flesh. Can I prophesy to you? Today marks the end of troubles. When I begin to read through this scripture, and I begin to discover that it is very possible to be on earth and no man troubles you. It is very possible to live a trouble-free life. I am here to introduce an all-purpose anointing through the mark of Christ that will free you from troubles of life. I did not hear the amen well. I did not hear the amen well. I want 
to coin it that the mark of God here talks about the anointing. The marks of God here talks about the oil of God. The oil of God. I prophesy before the end of this service, there is a radical oil that will drop on you. That will free you from all the troubles of the enemy. Can I say this? No more trouble. I say no more trouble. They have troubled you in your business. They have troubled you in your marriage. They have troubled you in ministry. They have troubled your children. They have troubled your finance. They have troubled your position. They have troubled your political career. After the end of this service, as the Lord placed the oil upon your life, no man, I repeat, no man, whether winch or wizard, whether astronomer, whether sorcery, using divine enchantment by wizardry, by power of false prophet, by power of manipulation, by power of divination, by power of witchcraft projection, by astral travel, by cosmos con control, I prophesy, they will not be able to handle your life. The amen is looking for my trouble. The amen is not born again. Shout that amen like thunder. Sit down. From today, no man shall trouble you. I say from today, no man shall trouble you. You know, David fought all manner of unnecessary battle. David fought about 69 nations, 69 all manner of war apart from Saul before he became a king. He fought battle to become a king. He became a king. He, he all through his life, it was full of battle. It is not a good testimony to be fighting battles all through. Are you the only one that have problem? Then when Solomon came on board, he had the testimony of Solomon. Don't you see David, my father? He could not build a synagogue for the Lord because he had battles all about him. He said, but the Lord for me, Solomon, has given me rest all around. My father fought battle, but I choose not to fight battle because I know the anointing that can silence troubles in life. Can I prophesy? I see you entering into the Solomic anointing where battles all around you will be silent. I never knew that it is possible for someone to attain greatness and enemies give up on their home. Paul says, henceforth, henceforth, I didn't know what has happened before now, but from now on, let no man trouble you because you belong to this family. <laughs> I did not hear the amen well. <laughs> hear what Job said in Job 5.19. Adam. He said, the Lord shall deliver you from six troubles. Job chapter 5 verse 19. He said, he said, he shall deliver you from six troubles. Yea, in the seven shall no evil touch thee. So there are troubles. Number one trouble. Number two trouble. Number three trouble. Number four trouble. Number five trouble. Number six trouble. Then Job said, no. In the seventh let nothing touch you again. From today, enough of this crying. Enough of these tears. If the amen is louder, somebody is coming out. How do they trouble you? They persecute you, that's trouble. They scandalize you. That's, do you know that some people don't know you who just talk about you anyhow? That's trouble. 
How did they trouble you? You are about to get a position. They go around to give a wrong profile of your personality. That's trouble. You are coming back from work. You are supposed to rest. Your children, you had one felt domestic problem. You are trying to lay your head. You had your wife have been rushed to the hospital. That's trouble. May you not see trouble in life. You did not hear me. To be rich is one thing. To have peace of mind is another thing. You did not hear me well. I have met presidents. I have met people in life. Very wealthy. Sickness eating them up. That's, that's not a complete wealth. Told John to say, which above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as that's so prospering. Tripartite level of prosperity. The prosperity that is evidential physically, financially, by what? The prosperity of your soul, the salvation of your soul, and the prosperity of your health. There are troubles. You just go to the medic, to the to the doctor, and the doctor said, by our analysis, through our medical tests and checkup, we had we just discover you have some cancer, some HIV, this and that. Today, I put an end to sickness trouble. You did not. I say, I put an end. I met a man very wealthy, very, very wealthy. When I mean somebody is wealthy, very wealthy. He broke into tears. I was crying. And I said, why are you crying, sir? He said, there is nothing that money can buy that I cannot buy. But my doctors just told me in less than six months, anything can happen. My case is hopeless. That's trouble of life. To go to your bank only and look at the amount of houses you have, the amount of investment that you have made, just about when you are about to eat the fruit of your labor, one sickness from the pit of hell just appear. Then you try to sleep, you see coffee, you try to sleep, you imagine yourself going down six feet, you try to sleep. Sleep. You remember that your, your family will ravage your children from your wealth. Then you become troubled. No wonder John 14 verse 1 say, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, also believe in me. That in my father house there are many mansions. That if it were not so, I would have not told you that I go to prepare a place for you. That where I have, there ye may be. Every trouble of your life Life ends today. I said they end today. First King chapter 18, verse 17 to 18. Today marks the end of your trouble. Hear what Elijah and Ahab was this were discussing in First King chapter 18. Verse 17 through 18. Elijah, Elijah met with Ahab. He said, and it came to pass, and Ahab saw Elijah. That Ahab said unto him, And thou he that troubled Israel. Ahab, and he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou, thy father house, in that ye have forsaken the commandment of the Lord, thou hast followed Balin. You know, there's a way a man of God can have audacity. It's not every one of us that have that level of anointing. That you talk with imbued capacity because you are an Holy Ghost Pentecostal naked wire. That people can see you as a troublemaker. He have said, Elijah, you are the one that troubled Israel. Elijah said, you man, you don't understand the meaning of prophetic mantle and trouble. You see, it is you and your wife and your family with Balaam that troubled Israel. You are the troubler, I'm not a troubler. 
The reason why the body of Christ has come down is that we don't have pro prophet with audacity. It is very possible for churches to be pulled down. And you hear, where is the plan? Where is the survey? Have you ever heard that they pull down Shrine houses down? Where have you ever heard that they ask native doctor, where are your survey of this Shrine? They are afraid. Do you know why they are afraid? Because the person that represents that office look hard, guard, and dangerous. Today, I prophesy, no man shall touch your life. I did not hear the amen well. I did not hear the amen well. Shout that amen like thunder. It is very possible for police to arrest men of God. But there is a way a native doctor can put on costume and you tell them to an eye, you say, hey, yeah, 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 and they say, oh, God, first go, go first go arrest. <laughs> you didn't hear me well. There is a way a native doctor can put on costume. You know those things are costume. And begin to shout and dance all around. Then you hear the police say, Oga, we crack on, we there for here, we they wait for you. Why are they afraid of shrines and not afraid of the house of God? Because we don't have true prophets. We have few prophets. Few who can talk. I'm not talking the one who have become political and bad to politicians or to some politicians. I'm talking about the ones who can look at the eyes and say, this is what the Lord says. Audacity. First Peter chapter 4 verse 11 says, if any man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. We are oracles. We are oracles. For every obstacle, there is an oracle to bring your miracle to take you to your pinnacle. To every obstacle, there is an oracle to bring your miracle to take you to your pinnacle. Today I speak as an oracle of God. Can you put first Peter chapter 4 verse 11? He said, if any man speak, let him speak as an oracle of God. If any man minister, minister, let him do it with the ability that is given. That God in all things may be glorified through Christ Jesus to whom be praised, dominion and forever. I am not speaking as a preacher. I am speaking as an oracle. I prophesy from today every power fighting you is over. I did not hear the amen well. From today, every trouble that trouble you, I speak the way Elijah spoke in the Old Testament. Today marks the end. I did not hear the amen well. I did not hear the amen well. God spoke to me about a president in one part of the Africa that will become president. So many politicians from that country became angry with me. Say, why, 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 why will you say he will become president? I said, I said, God said he will become a president. And that's all. Oracles don't look at the faces of people when they talk. It's not a matter of favoritism. It's a matter of, did God say? Did God say? I prophesy. Today, I hear God say, your troubles are over. You did not hear me well. Your troubles are over. Have you seen any shrine ass? with survey plan have you seen any shrine art with any architectural drawing and they don't pull them down why are they afraid to pull it down because 
The person that occupies the office of choose to be a terrorist. There is two parts of God. He's merciful and slow to anger. Hebrews 12, 29 is a consuming fire. I have come to introduce the naked part, the electrocuting part of God. Any enemy that touch you by mistake shall die by correction. I did not hear the amen well. I say they shall die by correction. Today marks the end of the battle. As you shout the amen, something is leaving you. Something is leaving you. Something is leaving you. Something is leaving you. Sit down. I've been reading this scripture until God correct me and say, no, go back. That's not what I mean. Because just one word can change the meaning of the sentence. That's Romans chapter 8, verse 35. We used to say, what shall separate us? The Bible didn't say what. It's not what shall separate us. Mm -mm. The Bible said, who? Who is talking about a personality that wants to separate you? As a missionary and evangelist then, of one ministry called Ark of the Glory Assembly. And we were given a land, and um, the land was sharing a boundary with a shrine. The shrine was just very close to the land. And now, the worshippers of the shrine, the agility is an ancient city after all day. They said, no boy, if you know that city, you will understand there's worship of idol. See, nobody should near there that that land automatically belongs to the shrine. Say what? And they say anybody who try to buy the, that land, once they make that statement, if you try to come in, you die. And I took, we went with my pastor then, and I said, look, I have this kind of anointing to look for trouble. All, all the people he brought to the land. To come and clear the land, they ran away. They say, if this land, Ile Orisha, Kosi Koko, they ran away. I took the cutlass himself, said, No, Pop, let us just um, look for another land. I said, Which land? Have you ever heard where the ark of God come to a land and the ark of God is excusing one Tashere demon? I took the cutlass with my left hand. I cleared every part of the land. After I finished, I took oil. I dropped on the land. That high priest under three days died. And that was the end. I don't know who is troubling you. I stand on this altar. I prophesy. May they die. I did not hear the amen. I say, may they die. May they die. May they die. May they die. Shut fire. May kubalates. Fale kubarati. In kubalades. Sit down. Genesis. I'm going somewhere. I just want to touch everywhere. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. See how the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art caused above all the cattle and above everything that liveth, thou art cursed. Thou art cursed. Because you have touched the dominion of man, you are cursed. You are cursed. Because you have touched the dominion of man. You are cursed. Can I say this? Any serpent, any spirit that belong to the serpentine generation that have taught you, I curse them. Sit down, follow me. Genesis chapter 4. When you read through, there's a story of a man called Cain and Abel. Verse 15. God placed a curse on Abel. And the Lord God 
unto him therefore whosoever let's go to let's start from verse 13 so that you can understand this from verse 13 and Cain said unto the Lord my punishment is greater than I can bear okay go to verse 12 to help them understand he said when thou tillest the ground it shall not henceforth yield unto thee a strength a fugitive a vagabond shall that be on the earth watch this who placed a curse on Cain God why did God place a curse on Cain because Cain killed his brother Abel God became angry God said what is this thing that you have done the blood of your brother cried out from the ground for vengeance <laughs> and Cain said am I my brother's keeper God under annoyance said you will suffer to till the ground a fugitive a vagabond where you wander throughout life like a useless human being you'll be like a madman you'll be forgotten throughout lifetime and you will wonder everybody will know that it is because you killed Cain Abel your brother now look at the next verse look at what this man immediately look at what this man did and Cain said unto the Lord my punishment is greater than I can bear this thing is too much Ooh, this punishment is too much now hear what God did behold has that driven me out of this day from the presence of the earth and from thy face I shall be hid that no, I won't see your face again I won't see your favor I shall be a fugitive a vagabond in the earth and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me they will kill me because I am now vulnerable like an animal that should be killed just like when you see a snake and you kill a snake then hear what God said in verse 15 the Lord said unto him therefore whosoever slayeth Cain the same God who placed Corso he said vengeance shall be taken on him in what are you worse than Cain who are you worse than Cain why is God God said anyone that taught you I will kill that person seven times <laughs> can I prophesy here anyone that taught you seven times the Lord will touch them back that amen is looking for my trouble anyone that taught you the Lord shall take vengeance seven times <laughs> 